Hey everyone, uh, welcome back to the TNC podcast, a very exciting episode coming up today. Norwich City are on the up, Chris and I are very, very excited as I'm sure you are too. Uh, we're also very excited to welcome back NordVPN as today's podcast sponsor. Now loads of you have downloaded NordVPN since I last mentioned it on the podcast and I've been using it personally a lot over the last couple of weeks. You may have wondered where I've been, I've been out in the United States on a holiday, uh, I missed a couple of cracking Norwich games but that was fun. Fine. They were televised on Sky and I could use SkyGo thanks to NordVPN. Now there's location blocks when you try and watch football abroad, but that was fine. With NordVPN, you can change your location. So I was in the US, I changed my location to the UK. It meant that I could browse things. I was also wanting to watch The Bear on Disney, which is a very good TV program. You can't get that in the United States on Disney. You can in the UK. I just flicked my location to the UK once again. It's a virtual private network. It's the quickest out there and you can uh, browse the internet very securely with just one click. The feedback from you guys have been absolutely awesome, hence why NordVPN have come back to sponsor the podcast. You can get a massively reduced rate when you sign up to a two-year deal using the link in the description. That's nordvpn.com, that's N-O-R-D-V-P-N.com forward slash Talk Norwich City. Your help means that they continue to support us and it's a genuinely brilliant product. NordVPN, thank you so much on today's podcast. Hello and all welcome back to the TNC podcast. I am fresh back into the UK and Norwich City are fresh on their way to the Premier League, Chris Reed. Hello, mate. <laughs> Come on. It's been a while. How funny. You missed the best game in years against Hull. I did see a tweet um, of, uh, of, a, of a big TNC fan um, wanting to start a GoFundMe. Right. To uh, leave me in America. <laughs> I didn't see that. Yeah. Who was they didn't it? actually start it. I love um, that. But it was an idea because whenever I leave the country, Norris City turn into I uh, agree. 2011 Barcelona. Uh, do you know who started that or can you not remember? I can't remember. Well, well honestly, thank you to whoever mm. started that. And, I, and I, I personally would like to put money from my own pocket into that GoFundMe <laughs> to make sure this fella stays out there because we've turned into, let me tell you, yeah. Jack Reeve, we've turned into a vintage Brazil it's whilst been, you've been away. It's been really exciting. Like, I, I managed to watch the games um, thanks to our sponsor for today, NordVPN, who are actually genuinely very good. Um, yeah, I'm really excited to get into today. And I was saying to you off air, I've missed like, I don't know, probably like 10 games, 10 home games over the past five, six, seven years from various mm. holidays. And the last time I can remember genuinely being gutted to miss a game was during the Alex Neal promotion season, 2015-ish. Yeah. I think we played maybe Bolton away from home or something. And I, and I was watching that in America going, God, I wish I was there. Yeah. And since that point, I've been like, oh, it's missing a game. It's okay. I was gutted I missed these. That's a good sign. Gutted I missed. That's a very I, good sign. Poor admin from me, but I was <clears> positive <throat> when I booked this trip. It was an international break. But I got, I was a week off. And the international break's coming up. You were nation leagued. I was. I was nation leagued. Um, I am back, fresh from America. I, I must say, actually, Chris, um, we've got a lot of fans in America. Yeah. F to those who are in Florida at the moment, <clears throat> mm. like, please stay safe. It's um, it is brutal out there at the moment with the with Hurricane um, mm. Milton coming in. So I was very lucky to get home just in time. Um, but to those who are living there, yeah. Um, our thoughts and uh, and prayers are with you all. Mm. Um, how have you been? Yeah, good. So good. Yeah. I mean, look, look, look what we're watching. Look what we're enjoying week mm. in, week out right now. Enjoying. That's the key enjoy. Yes, it is. It is. A um, couple of plugs to start this podcast, Jack. You're rude not to. Let's do it. Absolutely. Um, 101 Computers, who I'm sure you've seen on our... Uh, pre-video ads and yeah. post-video ads and on Twitter as well we've got a new series yeah the canary question yeah our social medias by the way thanks to you popping off at the moment thanks mate some appreciate good stuff that. on that thanks mate appreciate that um, 101 computers yeah so they are the go-to people um, for computer space stuff yes. in Norfolk at the moment run by a lovely chap called Chris who is also a Norwich fan not this Chris you wouldn't want him anywhere near your computer <laughs> um, they are doing free health checks for your computer yes that's right you can hit the link uh, down below um, and uh, you can go on their website do a health check and essentially establish what the hell is going on with your computer it might be slow there might be things going on with it and uh, Chris Knowles fantastic local businessman massive Norwich fan 
uh, will uh, will help you as soon as possible with that problem and make sure that your computer is up to the standard you deserve. Yeah, we'll uh, link that in the description. I must admit that I was gutted when I saw it was a computer-based health check because as you can hear in my voice, <laughs> I was hoping it was a human-based health yes, check. He, he's, I am he's very good. clogged up. He's good, but he's not <laughs> that good. Um, Big C. Yes, just wanted to say a huge, huge thank you yet again the Yellow Army, the Talk Norwich City community came together and essentially helped raise so much money. Close to 1,500 quid. Yeah, what was the final 1,430 pounds. It's just amazing. And it actually makes me a little bit emotional, actually. That is so much money that will help with research. It will help with support. It will help with counselling. Mm. It will help local people affected by cancer it means the absolute world to us that people have dipped into their pockets you know two pound raffle tickets here you know, 10 pound raffle tickets there whatever you donated it's incredible and i also just wanted to say a very special shout out to borja science because not only is he a joke of a player on the pitch for us uh, as we saw with that lofted finish which we're going to go into in a minute such a kind gracious caring uh, man that that and was gets happy. what Norwich is about. Yeah, and was just so happy uh, to uh, chuck in a signed shirt and some boots for for Big C. So thanks, Borja. Thanks to you guys for donating. And it's worth noting as well, we've drawn the winners. So yes. if you entered, have a look on your emails, and I think we also put it on our social. Accounts. Yes, we did. So if you don't know if you've won yet, have a look on those. You might be uh, very lucky. Mm. Um, Norwich City goes to the Premier League. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's happening. I'll tell you something, Jack. I'll tell you, should I tell you something? No, I'd love you to tell me something. I've seen enough. Have you? I've seen no. enough. No. Yeah. Already? I've seen enough. <laughs> I've seen enough. Oh, wow. I've seen enough. I've seen enough. I don't need any more time. It is on. It is on on the 9th of October. Yeah. Wow. If you're listening to this, go over to YouTube. The, the HMS PTL hat yeah. is on. I, I, I don't need to see it anymore. It's good to see it again. Oh, it's a bit dusty. She's, awesome. du she's a bit dusty. I don't think, yeah, she's I, a little I'm big, bit. I'm a bit concerned why you've not put your hat on, Jack. Because I need a little bit more You need committing. Well, maybe no, no, when we... Throughout well, this podcast. Yeah, yeah. So maybe by the time we get to the, uh, the X question statements and raves, mm. that hat will come on. But no, look, for me, mate, honestly... The way we're playing football at the moment is genuinely like watching Brazil. Genuinely, um, what 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 Johannes Offterup has done with the players, of course, in the time that he's had, it's been absolutely. It's been nothing short of exceptional. Of course, there was Oxford. Let's forget about that. But no, I, I think it's important we remember that because oh. it makes the oh. job even more impressive. Okay. Look, we were both at Ox Oxford, right? Mm. First day of the season. Um, I remember speaking to George Ellick off not the top 20 he was an Oxford fan afterwards and he was like Oof, you boys have got a long way to go and it was a nice it was nice to hear that from a neutral fan mm. and I was watching that going look I'm still fully in support of Johannes I like the players that we've signed but this job is bigger mm. than I thought yeah. and I thought it was a big job anyway like everyone had predicted us mid-table and I thought that was actually quite a, a kind observation and I was like let's stick with it let's be patient and let's just try and maybe scupper our way to like 12th place and let's see some signs well we're nine games into the season and it's genuinely really exciting and the stats are backing up the oh. fact that we are the best performing team in the league yeah absolutely yes we're not at the top yet I think we might get there and this is the really pleasing thing Chris is like I was at Selhurst Park the night we got beat 4-0 by yeah. Palace and that was a really telling night for me because Norwich got thumped by a a very good Premier League. Well, I haven't won actually the Premier League yet, but on the night they were yeah. very good. Norwich got beat, but they played well. And the 2,000 travelling fans were fully behind what was going on. And I look at... And, and, and that kind of shows that there's substance behind mm, what we're seeing. Totally and with you. Norwich fell, fell into the playoffs last season. We had Sarah, we had Sargent. Individual quality kind of got us there. But we were yeah. so far short of yeah. the teams that went up. And it was... I've got to admit, very unenjoyable for the most part last season. And the thing is, though, it, that that was the season of moments of individual, yes. of individual one-offs, etc. Well. Yeah, well, <clears throat> if we have to. Um, but this season, we are a slick, 
well-oiled, well-drilled, well-coached, fit football team. And it's brilliant. And genuinely, I look down the fixture list now and I'm absolutely clucking for the next game. Mm. And, and, and I know that we've laughed and we've joked on this podcast, you know, who stops us? But seriously, who does stop well, us? Well, I think... The, who does stop us? Well, I can't give you an answer. Leeds, draw. Sheffield United, draw. Should have beat Sheffield United, if we're being honest. Well, yeah. So, come on. Yeah. And, and I think it's incredible that we've gone from that space of Oxford away and now the narrative... Rightly so, by the way, due to um, standards, not over expectations, but but standards. I love the fact now that the narrative has changed. This is going to take time to, we believe we can do something special. And people that are watching and listening to this, I'm sure 95% of them are with me on that. Yeah. They believe this Norwich, Norwich team can do something special mm. this season. And I think this hat going on, right? Like there is genuine belief now, but equally it's a sign of, us having our Norwich back, us playing exciting football. I, you know, I was in America and I was watching that Hull game. Science misses a good good chance early on. Yep. Nunes misses a chance early on. Yep. And I was like, that's kind of okay because we're just going to keep creating yep. more chances. And well, that's the pleasing thing. That 4-0 wasn't, we were clinical, we took our four chances mm. and we defended well. That was actually quite a wasteful performance yeah well that's we missed the penalty well, we missed two one-on-ones yeah, yeah and that it is essentially could have been seven and that's not you know hyperbole there no 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 100 percent, mate and that's why your hands off turret came out came out after the game saying there's still there's still a long way to go mm. there's still more levels that can happen and you know i, I could feel the hairs go up in my arms when he said that i thought bloody hell mate calm down yeah. come on we've just won four nil but actually you look at those big chances that we created Yanis is right. You Under know, David Vart, we had a funny conversation in the Barclay as well when Signs um, couldn't quite convert that, that first big chance of the game. He tried to kind of dink it over yeah. the keeper, but of course he redeemed himself and did it even more impressively in the second half. But anyway, um, we all turned around and we went, isn't it funny that if that was Under David Wagner, we would have been like, right, that's our only chance of the game. Yeah. We're done now. Yeah. And we all laughed about the fact that that was going to be our, be our only chance. And now you're right, Jack. There is this mentality, not just off the pitch, behind a screen, but in the stats, mm. there is this support, this atmosphere, yeah. this aura of genuine belief and hope. And we know that this team is going to create more. Mm. It's bloody exciting. And I think there was a really telling moment in that Leeds game, which I thought was, again, a really impressive performance. We go ahead, Leeds equalised. They probably had the momentum. Under Wagner, we'd have been like, right, Defensive midfielder on another uh, defender. Park the wagon. Pressure. Yeah. We, uh, the JHT, completely different. I think Schwartau came on. Yeah. There was another attacking. And it was like, let's try and change the dynamic yeah. and take it to Leeds. And we did. And we could have probably actually did. nicked it. You know what the most pleasing thing for me has been? Come and on. and the, the, the sign that this guy <clears throat> in Torp is the real deal. Come on. So the signings, you know, off the top of my head, Doyle, Cordoba. Yeah. Schwartau to an extent yeah. I actually think Sienatz has been quite impressive Forsen. considering the role Force and Mankwa all brilliant that's not the exciting thing for me right what is the exciting thing for me has been the improvement to Shane Duffy wow yes to Kenny McLean to Marcelino Nunes to Kellen Fisher mm. I mean we'll talk about him a lot this podcast but wow even to Josh Sargent yeah he has gone from being the best striker in the championship to by far the best chance. <laughs> and, 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 and people, Hang this on. isn't me. And like, against Hull, by the way, he misses a penalty and yet he still looked like the best striker in the championship and scored a goal. He's missed the most big chances in the championship and yet he's still, but it, it's not even that. I think he's got four assists this season. He's setting science up. It's the movement. Yeah. Even Borja Science, right? Like Borja Science last season, you could tell was a really special player, mm-hmm. but he was, I'd say immature in, in some situations. I don't think his numbers backed up his performances. If you if you didn't look at the performances and you just looked at the numbers, it was a very average season. Nine goal contributions in nine games this season. Yeah, seven goals. Phenomenal. Top striker in the champion. Uh, top scorer in the championship yeah. this season, and he could have scored more. So Borja signs for, remarkable. So Borja signs to, to to turn good players into great players. Borja signs specifically, and I'm sure people have seen this on social media. If you haven't, you're about to be told. Has is only second 
to Erling Haaland for goal contributions really? out of the 92 English Is league clubs right? this season. Boa signs electric. He's missed a load of chances. Boa signs simply sensational. The guy, the guy is an absolute joke. He's so bloody good, I and think, it just shows. But I love what you said there, Jack. And let's go into that, right? I've just got another oh, go quick stat to, to back up. George Massey, who yes. wasn't on my radar last season, but has been on my Twitter feed a lot. And maybe he's been coached give by George. Jay. Give George a follow, by the way. Yeah. He's George some underscore really, Massey. Yeah, some really good Norwich City stats coming out of his account. But he said, whilst Norwich have created the most big chance in the league, 28, they've also missed the most, 19. <sighs> this side, in an attacking sense, has another level if we're more clinical. Yeah. But this is the pleasing thing. Like I remember Preston last season winning like their first <clears> seven <throat> games. But they're, you know, they basically just took every chance they had. They were mm. super clinical. That's not sustainable. This is sustainable. Yes, with that them. stat has backed up and said, yes, we're missing chances, which is going to happen when you have a lot of chances. Yeah. But we're also scoring some. Yeah. We're still not yeah. at top level yet. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And that's incredibly exciting, not just from a, wow, there's more to come, but from a sustainability point, there is a, you know, yeah. this is sustainable. So with you, mate. So with you on that. Um, I just want to quickly reverse there and go back to. You're right. The new players will get the headlines. Borja signs will will get the headlines. Rightly so, by the way. But I I just want to make a particular shout out to specifically Shane Duffy, mm. but also those other players. You know Nunes as well. You know Nunes. Oh, massively. Nunes so. last season, in my humble opinion, was a player that occasionally, depending on the system that was played, went missing. I agree. I'll be honest. This season under Johannes Stoff Turup, I, I think he's the second, if not the best player that, that we've had in terms of what he does on the pitch, how important he is, how pivotal he is to the way we play. We heard Jose Cordoba say on his exclusive TNC podcast with us just how crucial he is to the to the way yeah. that Norwich City tick. Unfortunately, he's now got a hamstring injury, which is a bit of a concern. We might we'll maybe okay. come back to that. We hope so. Um, but, my, but my point is, it's I'm looking at Shane Duffy, right? And he's calmer on the ball. His passing has improved tremendously. He looks even stronger. He's winning more duels, yeah. both ground duels and aerial duels. I'm so impressed with Shane Duffy and I wanted to give him his flowers yeah, in this too. podcast because he's been a player previously that we've criticised, in my opinion, rightly so. But this season deserves credit and is a sign yet again. Johannes Hofturup, that's the reason why my hat's do, on. Do you think with Shane, it's, it's a sense of if he doesn't perform, he's out. He's got Callum Doyle who can shift back into centre-back. He's maybe. got Brad Hills. Maybe. And that's a good thing. You know, want that competition, yeah, don't absolutely. you? And by the way, we've got the same thing with Kellen Fisher and Jack Stacey. Well, let, let's speak about Kellen Fisher, right? Because yeah. So we've got Jack Stacey in, a, in at right back who I must say didn't have the best start to this season, but it's still... I would say a dependable right back in the championship. Yeah, Incredibly I agree. Incredibly athletic and off a lot. Yeah, I agree. Would fit into most championship yeah, teams. Can get you an assist. Bit. Yeah. To drop Jack Stacey is a big call. It is a big call. Especially when you're sticking in Kellen, was he 18, 19? I can't remember, but very young. I remember watching Kellen Fisher last season at Sunderland and he was up against Jack Clark. Yes, I remember And I that thought, too. oh, he's, there's clearly signs, but there's a long way to go. Mm. He's small defensively wasn't great that day. Um, and, I, and I just remember looking at him and going, you know, there's a lot of young players in the championship who, who show signs of mm -hmm. goodness, but will they cut it? Probably not. So when Kellen's been thrown into the deeper, what was the first game he played? I was definitely here for, I can't remember anyway. And I was like, wow, that was a really mature performance. Oh, it was the, um, it was the Watford game. And, since that point, I mean, he was good that day, but since that point, I've looked at him and I've been so proud of him. Yeah. So proud yeah. of him. I remember I, was, I saw his dad, who I, I know you know yeah, uh, Dave, very well, great but um, I saw him at the um, Oxford game. Yeah. And uh, just lovely, like, proper good story, Kellen Fisher. Brought through the non-league ranks. We picked him up yeah. from Bromley. Bromley? Yeah. yeah. Um, and now, you know, his dad was there, his sister was there watching. And, I just, and I, I've just looked at his performances since that point and gone, wow, what a brilliant story. So let's press pause what on that. a brilliant that. story. So let's press pause on that. There's one word that I'm going to pull out of what you've just said there. Proud. Mm. What a fucking good feeling that is. Yeah. Being that proud of a young mm. player. When was the last time we... 
we felt that way. And probably Max Aaron's. Yeah. Well, and I and I posted this on social media, and I've said it in my match review, and I'll say it time and time again. Kellen Fisher has had his Max Aaron's moment. Do you remember Max Aaron's away at Ipswich was thrown in for Evo Pinto, and we thought, yeah. oh, bloody hell, don't do that. And then he was undroppable. Yeah. For me at the moment, Kellen Fisher is undroppable. Um, I put something out on my social media the other day about um, Kellen Fisher during his youth career being able to play multiple positions. He actually played as a striker. Yeah. He was one of the top goal scorers. For, yeah, was the top goal scorer, sorry, four years in a row. Was moved into midfield, which is why we we're, were able to see him move into midfield yeah. sometimes in, in stages and phases of the games at North City now so comfortably. Kellen Fisher, absolute revelation. Mm. Kellen Fisher, undroppable. Kellen Fisher, tenacious, ferocious. By the way, Good here's work. a new one for you. The Kellen Crunch. Oh, yes. TM. Trademark that, baby. <laughs> Kellen, the Kellen Crunch. Right. My God. Mate, his tackles. Yeah. Good. Yeah. And I've seen people go, oh, oh, oh no, that's silly. Don't do that. No, no, no. Do you know what, Kellen? I know you, I know you watch. Keep doing that. Yeah. Keep doing that. The fans love a Kellen Crunch. Mm. Yeah. Don't be careful. Don't. Get a bit of meat on the no, bones. Get the fans up. And do you know why? Really and out, out of everything that you could praise Kellen for, the thing that's actually getting me going the most is after the Kellen Crunch trade, yeah. trademark, he is celebrating tackles. <laughs> yeah. Panting the bad. Yeah. And we talk about XP. Oh, mate. Ex- expected passion. And he's got that in absolute Bucket I feel like we might need to change this metric just in terms of the way it's measured because it's already gone above one at multiple points this season, hasn't it? Yeah, it has. Yeah. It's already gone above it's that. It's brilliant. No, I, I, I just think we, we've we got to be careful not to get like overhyped with Kellen. Why? J- just in terms of like his progression. But no, I'm so, don't be so boring. I, I'm Enjoy so it. proud of him. What I'll tell you what we're seeing here. I'll tell you, I'm going to put another statement into the room, right? You ready for this? Spoken about Maxi Aarons, right? Here's another one. What we've got here is the second coming of Norwich City legend, Adam Drury. <laughs> That's a big shout. That's a big shout. It's here. Yeah. Believe it. But he, I'm, It's the truth. I think with... um The thing I've been most impressed with Johannes Hoftorup this season has been his ability to take seemingly the perfect performance and find critique in it and improve yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Well, I've got an improvement for Callum Fisher. Come on. I, I, want, I want him to be the perfect all-round player. Yeah. And there is a weakness in Kellen's game. I know what you're going to say. The socks. You Kellen, love a sock. Kellen, you've got to sort the socks Jack, out. Jack, Jack, you, Jack. That you're going to get injured. When he shatters his shin Jack. and he's out for a few months, don't come to me crying. Jack. Put some shinnies on, Kellen. Jack. If, Pull the socks up, Kellen. Jack, if Kellen plays like that, he can do whatever he <laughs> wants. Uh, um, Next. Very impressive. Very, Hull? very impressive. Are we talking about Hull in general? Talk about what you want, because yeah. there's a lot of good stuff to talk about. Four goals. Yeah. Unbelievable. Nunes with a belter. Sergeant, by the way, the, the, the Sergeant's second goal for Norwich against Hull oh, was a, it was a work of art. Yeah, it was really good. You could have hung that up in the Tate Modern, right? And they, and 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 it would have been stolen. Yeah. Because it's so fucking good. It was it, I think if if JHT was to pick a goal out from this season and go, that's what I want. It would have been it that. was that. Yeah. I mean, the, the, I think it was Science that played the ball, wasn't it? Sergeant's yes. on the end of it. I mean, everyone in that passage of play was... Those was two, by the way, as well. Another criticism previously in this season is I've said, I think Borja and Josh are still developing their understanding. Oh, it's there now. Oh, my God, it's there now. It's I mean, so we saw now. it... At, they are a deadly duo. We saw it. The first game I missed of being on holiday was the Derby game, which, of course, came with controversy. I mean, what a mad game that was. Yeah. But you could see it coming in yeah, that game. 100%. You could see it coming in the Leeds game. Yeah. I've seen a lot of people on Twitter this week, and I'd love to get your thought on it, comparing science to Buendia. Well, I've, is he there yet? Well, mate, I, 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 I'm bored of that. Have we got, have I've been, we got I've been our, saying our that, Buendia replacement? I, I'm, so, I'm sorry this comes across Aaron. I've been saying this from the moment he walked in the door. You look at, you look at his size, his stature, the way he carries the ball, mm. left foot, right foot. Um, his temper. Uh, ag- aggression, prowess. <laughs> Aura, kids say aura. Yeah, they it's do, true actually. though, isn't yeah. it? Right? And my, He's of got course aura. He is. Of course, I'm. I'm pleased that people are starting to finally wake up. Yeah. To the fact that he is the next Emmy Buendia. Mm. Um, Nunes brilliant, Sergeant yeah. brilliant, Science brilliant, everyone brilliant. That oh, was... let's sprinkle a little bit of Gordon into the mix. Really interesting. Disco one. Gordon. Yeah. Hello. 
Why not? And I tell you what, if we talk about XP, yeah, see the celebration yeah, of that kid. Yeah, absolutely Ooh. superb. Yeah, really, really good. Scored on his birthday. Love that from you. What was he like? 15 you know, or the, something? The thing, the thing I'm really excited about Gordon, and look, there's no doubt that it, it's, um, it, it's a coup for Norwich City to be able to get Gordon from, from Liverpool, of course, massive club, and they wouldn't have lent us a player like Gordon um, if they didn't believe in the project, if they weren't told that he would get game time, etc. We, we can't forget that Gordon's had a big injury. I think that that's probably impacted um, the way that he's maybe started at Norwich City. What I love about Gordon is when he's running at when he's running at people. Okay. I spoke to my friend Matt Hale, actually, who's a, who's a Derby fan. He's on loan at Derby. He said, look, in a one-on-one situation, Kay Gordon, mm. wow, like what a player he, he is going to be. Um, I'm, sure Liverpool, to I'm sure Liverpool fans say it as well. The thing that I would say in his first few games, naturally, <clears throat> because he's getting up to speed, is I think he's m- maybe been playing it too safe. And I don't know whether he's been instructed to do that by Johannes, I must say. But Kay Gordon, when he's on the ball, he's carrying the ball forwards, he's trying to beat players. And the passing as well, I think it was for the Borja goal, the Borja lofted yeah. chip goal, where Kay Gordon, he kind of just very just comfortably takes it past a couple of players, plays a brilliant, quick, perfect pass through the lines. I mean, that's what you want to see. So I love Kay Gordon. And I think a really interesting debate now, and a lot of people are... are, are um, I'm really happy with either or, and I am too, by the way, but one to put out there. Ante Sanats, Cade Gordon, do you now maybe mix and match? Do you maybe start Cade? Do you stick with Sanats? Do, and, and by the way, this isn't me doing down Sanats because I think you can clearly see there's a really, oh, yeah, really sure. good yeah, technically yeah. gifted player there, right? And by the way, what a front three that could be when Sanats really hits his yeah. levels, right? Once he's adapted to the English game. For sure. Um, anyway, my point is maybe we give Sanats a break and we start Gordon. And, but, but I well, love, there's options. I love the fact that we yeah. could switch those two over. But let us know in the comments, Cade Gordon or Sanats, who are you starting? Want well, different options. And I think that's the joy. And we've got an, another new recruit to the Danish destroyer, HMS DD, Emiliano Macundes. Yeah. Injury to Onel. Yes. Free transfer. And Emiliano. Barzi, yeah. Uh, comes in. Tidy. Yeah. I mean, great um, CV. Yeah, great CV. Uh, promoted before, scored some important goals actually um, for Bournemouth and for Brentford. I like the look of him. Yeah. I think he looks like a really tidy operator. We've not seen a, not a lot yet, but when he came on, I was expecting this. Um, I was expecting him to be rusty with, with so much respect, but I was really, really yeah. impressed with my Condes. And actually, he probably um, will be disappointed he didn't hit the target. I think it was, it was a header. There was a headed chance towards the end of the game, which just narrowly went past the post. I quite like the look of Marcondas, actually. Okay. I think that Johannes has been really smart by bringing him in. Well, it's um, proactiveness, isn't it? Yeah. You could have quite easily just gone... Let's just or, botch it. Yeah, well, yeah. Not even that, but just be like, oh, let's hope that Onel comes back sooner than yeah. we thought. Yeah. And, oh, well, maybe we can fit someone in there. Yeah. No, no, I actually, like it. We'll go out. We'll no, sign like someone. And I like the fact he's got CV. a point to prove as well. Yeah. It's, it, it, it's great, but... We've not seen it. We we need to see more still. Um, I think we should get on to Twitter questions. Let's do it. It's always lovely seeing Twitter after a win because there's excitement, there's yeah. uh, optimism in the air. Yeah. And uh, great to see Gabriel Sutton get in touch. Hello. The go-to man yeah. uh, for EFL goodness. A real guru when it comes to Absolutely. EFL football. And what of a course, guy. a man who is takes things in his stride and is very composed, um, very calm. Mm. Well, he's not anymore. Right. He has simply tweeted us a ship and a hat. Oh, he is on board. Welcome aboard. And he knows HMS PTL, and, Gabriel. And he knows his EFL. Is that tempting you enough? Is that it is? Yeah, yeah. Sutton's are, tempted you on. Sutton, right? Come on. Sutton has put me. But look, he's far more intelligent than I am. Oh, it still fits a club. Oh my goodness! Look at it. The hat is look, on. Jack if he's Reed. saying it, then so am I. Come you know, on. He's watched Leeds. He's watched Sheffield United. He's yeah. watched Borough. Whoever you want to throw at us, and he's mm. gone. No, Norwich City are sailing the seven seas. The best at the moment. Love that. Fantastic. Um, Brilliant. Great. So, so good. Um, I, I, I guess it's. 
and I've seen a few people talking about this and, and yep. you as well. Okay. The last time we would have got promoted out of the championship would have been through Daniel Farker, mm. who's now at Leeds United. Yeah. We've seen him return with his Leeds United team. Are there comparisons to be made between the football that we're playing at the moment well, and, and the football that we played under under Farker? Well, um, I think it's making us feel it's making us feel that same excitement. Yeah, it's a really interesting debate: Hofball versus Farkball. Would love to know the Yellow Army's thoughts on that. I think for me, and I don't know whether it's recency bias or not. I think Hofball is Farkball on steroids. Really, I really do, and I think we're better defensively with Hofball so far. I know there's a long way to go, but so far, defensively, I think Hofball's better. I think with Farkball, we almost, you, you knew, what the, the difference is, I think what's what's for Farkball is we passed teams to death and there were late goals and it was almost like a, 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 a continuous batter of malnutrition, essentially. And we would just keep going and going yeah. and going and going and going and run teams into the floor. Whereas I almost feel like with Hofball, it's like, Ping, pang, pong, let's get the job done. Yeah, Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. And I think, I, I can't, I think it's the passing. I think it's the decisiveness. I think it's the pace of the passing under Hofball seems faster to me. But but what do you think? Well, I, I, look, I think w- the comparison can only be made come the end of the season. You know, Farker got sure. arguably a worse squad into the Premier League. So, like, mm. he managed it over the course of a season. I, oh, hang on a minute. Emmy Buendia, Team No, Pookie. I know, but it was mm. it was a very unknown Tim Krul. side. Ooh, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. Okay, well, look. Let us know your thoughts. If JHT can do it, then... Look, I'm... The, the nice thing is, is that first season under Farker in particular, yeah. the second season was like we had great players, we knew they were proven, we just blew everyone away and it was almost expected. That 18-19 season was, it was completely unknown. Mm. The football was like nothing we'd ever seen. And actually the championship had never seen. It was incredibly fresh and and, and new for its time. Um, and we've got that same feeling again. Mm. And that's, the, the comparisons are there for me in terms of like, I want to watch Norwich again. I'm clucking for the next game. I love the squad. I love the mood around the place. And the last time I felt that was probably 2019. So speaking of clucking for the next game, we've got a post in from Jack at uh, Lack Jordan, uh, who says, sing song, E-I-E-I-O, up the football league we go, when we win the title, this is what we'll sing, we are Norwich, Super Norwich, and Turp is our king, P.S., 100 points, 100 goals, up a notch, and that leads me on, Jack, to Jack there and Jack here, to talk about the next games in terms of points. Ooh. And I want to get your points prediction for okay. the next five, okay? okay? So we've got Stoke City away, Preston away, Middlesbrough at home, Cardiff away, Wednesday away, okay? So lots of away games there. Yeah, a lot of Let's go games. through it together. Okay. Stoke away. Narrative there with, uh, what's his face just gone? Narcissus. Well, that says a lot, yeah. Draw. No, wrong. Win. They've just had a brilliant win against Pompey, haven't they? Oh, what do they do? Pompey. Draw. Pompey. Draw. Pompey a pony. <laughs> 1-1. One, one. No way. Win. Preston away. Win. We'll win that. 2-0. I fancy a win there. Middlesbrough at home. Big game that. Harder, but we said that about Sheffield United. 3-0 Norwich. 3-0 against game. Middlesbrough at home. 3-0. Are you all right? Yeah. Are you on the old Lakers? I'm fine. Wow. I mean, I, I think we'll win that, but I don't think we'll win 3-0. 3-0. Cardiff away. We'll win that. Uh, they've just sat their manager, haven't they? So it'll right. be interesting to see what they're like. I don't know. Weeks. We'll win that. Right. Sheffield Wednesday away. Have Tough we got again. four of the next five games are yes. away? What's all that about? I don't... Just... And we'll win that as well. Right. So the are only game... Ch- are there so hang, ch- Tuesday hang, games hang in on. that? Right. Are there Tuesday games in that? Uh, or are they all Saturdays? The, uh, don't know. Without looking at the dates. Um, do you really think we're going to draw a stone? Yeah, because, you know, it's... We'll have something to blame with the international break. Stoke aren't a bad side, Chris. Oh, they're not a bad side, mate. Look, good look. coach there now. There is a good coach there now, Chris. Look, look, I've just said we'll win four in the next five, and you're unhappy with me. I want more. But anyway, let us know your points prediction for the next five games. This is a brilliant one from Ashley Bootle. And uh, have a look at our Twitter so you can see the picture. Statement. Yep. Welcome to the world, my baby boy on the 19th of September. What brilliant photo. Oh, lovely. I did um, see that one, actually. His current Norwich record is three wins and one draw. This will be his first ever 
TNC podcast. Yeah. P.S. Not sure why he fell asleep during the science hat trick masterclass. There's no doubt that he's asleep now listening to you. Whopping. I love that he was asleep. It's, it's boring to him now. You know, th- Norwich win away. Yeah, what could he do? It happens every week. Uh, congratulations. Yes, congratulations. Ashley and the family. I agree. Twitchy Terry statement. We haven't stunk. <laughs> I bet he's this, not twitchy anymore. We haven't stunk this badly of promotion since 1819. <laughs> We've just balled that up. Um, Jeff Man 98 <laughs> friend of the channel, says, Rave! Everything at this beautiful club is perfect. Sexy Fucking manager, hell. sexy manager, sexy football, sublime sausage rolls, superb social media content. I'm already missing out on my dosage of Hofball. Screw the international break. Get it in my veins now. I mean, is, they, is, is the, the veg patch still going the, well? The social media is overflowing with positivity. It's Shout brilliant. out to the Norwich admin, actually. He's yeah. having a bit of fun. He or she, I don't know who it is, running the Twitter page. He, having a bit of fun. He. Yeah. Having a bit of fun on that Twitter page, aren't you, Admin? Good to see. Yes, we are. Um, there's, there's so much praise for Kellen Fisher. There's almost too much praise to get through. You know, Ben Jones is shouting out uh, Kellen Fisher. George Russell is shouting out Kellen this Fisher. This is a good one from Harry, right? Come on. And, and let's bring a bit of um, realism into the chat. Just a little bit. Do not a load, not mm-hmm. a little bit. But he mm-hmm. says, mm-hmm. statement, the fitness of this squad and the amount of injuries depends on which division we're in next season. If everyone stays fit, we're more than good enough to finish in at least the top six. Agreed. Look even higher than that. And that's a good point because post... Um, who have we just beaten? We've just, we've just spoken about it. Hull. Hull. Um, Gunny, small little injury niggle. Nunez, yeah. Cordoba, I know he's gone away. Yeah. Sergeant's gone on international duty. And I always hate when he goes away on international duty. I kind of want to take his passport away from him. <laughs> but they're like... It's not the biggest squad. Yeah. And that's fine. Like, I'd always yeah. rather a thinner squad. But let's say Gunny's not quite fit for a couple of games. Like, that is going to be the thing that possibly breaks us this season. Well, yeah, but it's the same every season. Like, I think I think you, you can't live like that. Okay. You can't <clears throat> live like that. Yeah. You can't live in fear that players will get injured. Like, players are going to get injured, right? Yeah. But that's when your subs come on and make a name for themselves, right? And mm. I, I, I'm... I'm okay with that. Like, let's let's deal with that when it comes. Okay. And then arguably the first time we will need to deal with it is Marcelo Nunes. He is definitely out for this international break. I understand he is going to be out for a little while longer after the international break Hampton as well. Injury? Yeah. He's going um, to kick that bloody football so hard. For yeah. The, well, yeah. Goal. Maybe that's the reason why. And what about this from Chris Kemp, actually? It's a statement. I think Cordoba could become one of our greatest centre-backs we've ever had. Wow. The guy's a beast and has got all the attributes to do so. Also, when are the hats coming out? OTBC. Well, Chris, They're already the out. hats are on. Um, Cordoba, yeah, look, really, I think let's start with the fundamentals first. Really great bloke. Very, very switched on. Like mm-hmm. incredibly intelligent guy. He's still very young. Sets really high standards for himself. Uh, post that Watford game, he was like, oh, I was pretty average actually, and he was phenomenal man of the match yeah. performance. Um, yeah, I, yeah. Mean, I mean, let's see the longevity, but like tall, strong, could run with the ball. There was a couple of moments in that whole game mm. where he was progressing really mm. hard the pitch, and it made me chuckle. You wouldn't have heard that the commentator said, Oh, we don't often see Cordoba in these positions. And I was like, No, we Wrong. literally do. We do. Like, <laughs> you know, he was a, a winger for parts of that game. Yeah, why not? I mean, he's got he's yeah. got the attributes. Yeah. He's got a brilliant coach so working exciting. alongside him. Yeah, in a good defensive unit. You know, the the sky's the limit for that. Lad. The Prince of Panama. Um, another rave for Kellen Fisher here from uh, DRG underscore tweets. Uh, JHT has these boys playing like prime Barca after a few months. If we can get recruitment right next season, we could be an absolute force. Well, I disagree with that, Dan. We are already an absolute force. Kellen Fisher is the Bromley Danny Alves, and he's going to the very top, hopefully with Nodge. Again, yeah. just, just so much goodness there for Kellen Fisher. Absolutely. This is a good one from Fidley. He says, um, my thoughts on Sienats. Personally think he's suffering with Josh Sargent syndrome at the moment. Uh, being on the wing, just needs to have more shots on oh, goal. Okay. Completely agree. Yeah. I don't think he's a winger, but Interesting. I'd rather him on really? the pitch than not. Okay, and okay. Um, look, it means um, he's not going to start ahead of Josh Sargent in that striker role, but I think he is a number nine. Absolutely agreed. Lee Jones is um, also on the, the, the Shane Duffy uh, praise. He's going, don't think it's been talked about enough but the Shane Duffy redemption tour has been one of the key factors in our good run yeah look I I, again can't disagree I think it was the oh what game I think it was Sheffield United at home actually I was was doing Canary Call for it 
And I remember watching that game and going, wow, that was really impressive from Shane Duffy. Mm, but it was yeah. still, I, I was having to double check myself because I was like, I haven't said that for a long while. But ever since that point, he's been really good. So good. Like dependable, yeah. in the right positions. He's a different type of player to a Cordova, right? He's not going to go on those bursting runs, yeah. but he's been in the right positions. He's been dependable. And that's all you can ask for. Here's another huge positive, And Chris Ormerod has brought it up. It's a statement. We don't seem to miss any of our departures from the summer. Individually, yes, especially Sarah. But collectively, it seems far more harmonious without them. And this is interesting, isn't it? Because I'm looking at Nunes now. And I don't think this is an outlandish statement. I think Nunes can now shine because he's not in Gabby's shadow, if that makes yeah, sense. No, I, no. I, feel, I feel like... Of course, we're going to miss Gabby Sarah. We still, I don't, we, we absolutely adore the bloke here on the podcast and the Norwich fans. He's doing well, so, by the way, at his new club. Of course, as well. he bloody yeah. is. He's Gabby Sarah. Of course, he's going to the bloody top. Um, but I think Chris brings up a good point here, Jack. Isn't it nice that we've had to sell some players? We don't miss any of them because yeah. of just how much of a machine that Johannes Hofturup has built. Key, key point there. It's the way in which this club is coached. If if Sarah and Roe um, and Anida had left and we were still under David Wagner, we would have been a worse mm. team. And, like the, and, uh, and this was my frustration with David Wagner. And this is what frustrated me with neutrals who were going, well, he got you in the top six. Yeah, but that was like probably minimum requirement. And the football was shit. Like, it was awful. Mm. He didn't really improve anyone necessarily. Mm. And like, I liked Wagner. Yeah, nice yeah. bloke. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, actually, yeah. probably quite a good coach. Yeah. You, and, and everyone liked him at the football club. Yeah. And that goes a long way. But I was just going, oh, there's so much you more to more. get out of this. We could be and we should be playing better football. And we are. Speaking of getting more out of this, we've got a rant. That's right. A rant. Maybe the only rant of the week from Stephen Lister, our fantastic designer oh, here on Talk Stephen Lister's City. a rant. He's got a rant, yeah. He never rants, does he? Right, so this is really right. interesting. Speaking of getting more, can we stop repeating the F off Ipswich line after the just can't get enough chant? <laughs> it kills the chant instantly. Do the line once at the end, as it should, and then repeat the song. We used to keep that chant going and going for ages back in the day. I mean, that's got four likes, but I must admit, Stephen, I disagree. It is quite I good. I love yeah. telling them to <laughs> off. I love it. And I love the fact that five minutes later, out of nowhere, someone else tells them to F off. Shout out to Ipswich, actually, who started their... I still love... Can I, hang on, just I've got to interrupt you. I still love all the years we've been doing this blessed podcast... And the amount of times I've told you that you're pronouncing Ipswich wrong, you still say Ipswich like sandwich. And I love that. I don't want to pronounce it No, correctly. no, no, good. I love it. It's it, just, it's Switch. fantastic. Shout out to Ipswich, who've started their Premier League campaign fantastically well. Spent loads of money um, in the summer and are, are, are still without a win. I mean, bravo. Kieran McKenna, best coach in England. Spent loads of money um, and have got their way to a few hard for... Um, hard fought draws and also another shout out as well actually um i said in the summer a brilliant move for young abu kamara dream move to hull city it's what all kids dream of going to sit on the bench for for the mighty tigers and uh, great to see him progressing so well at hull really well done abu well done. abu kamara it could have been you um right if you've got to this point in the podcast prove it hashtag danish destroyer is the hashtag this week are you hashtag bored yeah if you're, you're aboard, if you're, you're aboard, aboard, if you're aboard, we want to see it on social media. Hashtag Danish Destroyer. Prove that you've been watching this podcast up until this point. Jack, there is a lot um, that, that we could go into and there's some really, really exciting times coming, I'm sure. My question to you to possibly conclude this podcast is, seriously now, can we dream of promotion? Yes. Yeah, we can. Uh, we, we no, genuinely, no, no, seriously. No, honestly. Seriously. Honestly. Let's look at a couple of the teams we've played. Sheffield United and Leeds. Rightly, by most intelligent people, yeah. predicted to be up there at the end yeah. of this season. And, I, and way, they will be. Uh, yeah, yeah. Norwich have not only scraped the draw. I remember when we played Southampton at home yeah, last season. Mean, was that the one where we, we had like 25% with 25% possession, yeah. possession. We had like one shot. We drew. We got pumped by Leeds last season. And like, we wouldn't... We were, we were kind of in that bracket of like less shit than the rest, but still <laughs> shit compared to the top three. Like we are well within that picture. And I even look at the some of the games that we haven't won. Swansea away, 
should have won that game. Yeah, yeah, agreed. And I think a lot that of lessons, disapp- particularly yeah. around Borja science, have been learnt from that. Been such a better player since that game. And I think Johannes Hoftorp said that he needs to be less emotional when he misses Could, chances. I, I, just, just a very quick one on that. And I, yeah. and I think I need to say this now. Borja wasn't actually... Um, Borja actually wasn't that well for that game. No, no, I'm just saying So, that. So what I would say is for Swansea... Yeah, I'm not surprised that he didn't convert the chance he had because it was all on him and yeah, he I'm wasn't blaming him. and he wasn't very well. I just so, think he's been a more complete player right, since. I just had to say, um, and the Oxford game, there was lots going on uh, around that. But you know, all the other games and performances have been really impressive. The, the, the thing that ever so slightly concerns me, and let's worry about this when it comes January. Johannes Hoff Torup will be on the radar of Premier League football clubs. So will Josh Sargent and Borja Science. Right. Let's try our best to keep hold of those okay. guys. Lose them, it's a different picture. Yeah. Um, the injuries concern me, as it will do all of the clubs in this division. But the numbers back it up. The eye test backs it up. Yes. Norwich City are, and this isn't me getting carried away, Norwich City are one of the best teams in this division. Hashtag the Danish destroyer. It's are a, you aboard? Let it's a really, really exciting time. I'm glad I'm back in the country. I'm glad I'm su- a supporter of this great club. And we're going to have some fun this season. Yeah. We're going to have a well, lot of fun well, this season. Yeah, but, but also to, to light and shade this, the thing that I would say is we're going to have to dig deep. Oh, yeah. And there's going to be points of this season. Of course, we're enjoying the positives. A brilliant 4-0 performance. There's going to be games every now and then this season where we lose or we're disappointing or signs misses a chance and da da da. That's where, as a fan base, let's stick together. But the- let's not pile in on a particular player. Da da da. George Long, by the way, is an example, right? Fucking hell, guy gets given a yeah, contract. A bit, by the way, yeah. guy gets given a new contract. It's gone out on social media. The reaction to that, could you imagine being in George yeah. Long's shoes and then you come on for a second half against Hull? Imagine your confidence. And so I was pleased that George Long I'm glad made you a couple of good Just a quick word on that because I'm, I'm not George Long's biggest fan, right? Okay. But I was disappointed with the reaction to that contract news. Second choice goalkeeper is a tough role to fill. Yeah. You bring in someone in and you're essentially saying you're not going to play. Yeah. Um, and when you do, we're expecting yeah. big things. That's a really tough role to fill. And by the sounds of it, and the people I've spoken to at the club, George Long is a great role model in the dressing room. Yeah. It's good to the young players and he accepts his responsibility mm. in this club. Is he better? Is he the best goalkeeper in the division? No, he's a long way off it and he's a lot worse than Angus Gunn. But I thought it was slightly unnecessary that the reaction to that contract. Is. My point is, let's stick together. Let's enjoy the positives. Let's enjoy this ride. Get your surfboard out and ride it, baby, because we're looking like promotion contenders. But... Just remember, let's not throw our, our toys out the pram when it goes but wrong. I, I really don't think we will, and I'll tell you why. Because there's more to this than just performances. Palace, Oxford, Swansea, all disappointing <laughs> results. Yeah. But the reaction to that, on the whole, was really good, and that gives me hope. And my lasting message from this podcast is enjoy it, right? It's been a long while since we've had yeah, yeah, unexpected yeah. excitement. So true. You go back to the Farker days and that will live long in the memory. And this is going in the right direction it's- to having one of those. And football is more about results and it's more about individual players. It's about a feeling. Mm. It's about encapsulating that feeling with your mates, whoever you go with, with your family, having good times in the pub pre and post-match. Going to Carrow with genuine excitement, talking to your mates, neutrals coming to me, who I was on holiday with and going, cool, this Norwich performance, like, when yeah. does this happen? And I've gone, yeah. yeah, I know, I'm surprised as well. Encapsulate all of that, enjoy it. Expectations were like mid-table at the start of this season. That may well still happen, who knows? But I think it's going to be a lot of fun wherever we finish this season. That's a bloody good feeling, Chris. OTBC, hashtag Danish Destroyer. Up the, pre- up the football league we go. Up to the Premier League. Thanks very much, everyone. Bye-bye. 